Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show we are going to take a look at the Galente ship tree, and basically it's associated um, a skill tree that you may or may not want to master, but you do need those because all the ships uh, have bonuses based on skills. Uh, before we dive into the subject, uh, be sure to throw in a like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here on the channel. And remember, we have a, a channel membership, so if you wish to support me and keep this channel alive, you can do that by donating the smallest amount, which is like $2, uh, link in the description. So what I'm doing right now, well, I'm basically just sitting in space on a gate, I'm chilling in my Argos. Yeah, I got drones, I got some weapons, which are not that important, by the way, because I'm going to focus mostly on drones and I'm going to fly mostly drone boats. Yeah, that's my ideal in life. So, the Galente ship tree. This is pretty much um, how the ship tree uh, looks like. Let's get back into the ship tree, actually. Uh, we should have a back button. No. There it is. So the back button is in the left uh, left side corner. Now, these are all the factions, or the ships, pertaining to s certain factions in the EVE Echoes game. We're going to take a look today at the Galente Federation and uh, all of its ships in the tree, and we'll also take a look at the ship tier levels and uh, talk about a little bit about each ship individually and its associated skills. Now, right off the bat, uh, we can tell that the Galente focuses heavily on armor. There's actually no ship in the tree that prefers shield tanking. Uh, everything is armor. All the ships have uh, either bonuses to armor or the armor is higher in stats uh, compared to the shield um, for the Galente ships. So let's take a look at the rookie ship, or the noob ship, uh, how players used uh, are used to call it, uh, Velator. Uh, Velator is basically your standard ship that you uh, appear in when you start the, the game, and you also get one by default whenever you lose your ship uh, and you dock into your station using your pod. Now the pod is uh, your escape capsule, Actually, you are inside of it, connected with weird wires, and um, you're basically controlling the entire ship uh, using this capsule. It's uh, we've seen the intro cinematic, the one with the uh, uh, wires and stuff connecting to the brain. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you control ships. So we've talked about the Velata has uh, small railgun damage. It's an excellent rookie ship. Uh, actually, all the rookie ships are pretty much the same. So let's uh, let's move aside. First frigate that you're gonna get also from the uh, tutorial, the basic tutorial, you're gonna get an Atron if you start off as Galente. Roll bonus stasis with fire capacity need. Um, a roll bonuses means. Uh, it's actually a ship bonus. You don't need to have any extra skills. You fly this, you get this bonus by default. Frigate command bonus per level. You get uh, five small railgun, five percent small railgun damage and uh, railgun accuracy fall off. A pretty uh, nimble and fast ship. Excellent to use even as a scout or interceptor. Uh, low cost. <laughs> Um, moving on to the incursors, this is a uh, the first battling, actual actual battling frigate that you're gonna you're gonna want to 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 go for if you aim to go for railguns. Um, so we've talked about the Galente uh, using armor tank, but there's also uh, the weapon preferred weapon type that the Galente favor, and it's either railguns or drones. So you'll see that the ships either have railgun bonuses uh, or drone bonuses and they're pretty much that uh, either drone boats or turret boats. Incursus has a small railgun damage bonus for frigate command bonus per level and 7.5 armor repair efficiency. This is the first battling frigate because it has this extra perk for tanking so you get to repair stuff faster. You can also use it for, uh, for like uh, basic tier anomalies in the, uh, in the encounters, but I 
would advise against this. It's actually good for PvP, but for PV PvE you want to aim a bit high and go for either the Destroyer or the Cruiser. We'll get to that in a moment. Moving on to Tier 3. So, you've got the Imicus. The Imicus, a frigate defense upgrade bonus per level, uh, scan resolution, um, something that is not yet implemented in the game. You, We don't have yet uh, scanners, we don't have probes, we've got nothing pertaining to exploration, nor for scanning down players. So the scanner resolution bonus is there on the ship, uh, they won't have to bother with adding it later on, but uh, we'll probably get the items too in the near future. Now, why the Imicus is such a good frigate? Because it's a transport frigate. Frigate command bonus per level, you get 5% cargo hold capacity, and if you scroll all the way down to the cargo hold capacity, you'll see that you have 1,000 cubic meters. An excellent, agile, fast ship to transport, to do your early hauling contracts. Remember, you can go into the... Uh, in into the market for the delivery section and you can pick contracts people that want stuff moved from point a to point b we've done this we've covered this topic um, you can take on this frigate as an early starter and start gaining that offline isk yeah because you can uh, set the autopilot and the offline being offline will just uh, um, allow you to move through the systems and you'll get money uh, moving on to the Tristan, still a tier 3, a tech 3 level ship. We've got drone DPS, small drone operation bonus per level 5%, and drone EH, uh, EHP, effective HP. Uh, frigate command bonus per level, small railgun tracking speed. So this is sort of like a hybrid. You can either go for turret, you can either go for drones, you can go both. Uh, it's a good drone boat, I must say. Um, but I don't think it will be used that much because uh, we're going to get there in a moment uh, to the destroyer. Frigates are good if you fly like in a gang and you go like for a quick roam trying to catch some uh, uh, some miners. But against a bigger gang or against something big, uh, unless you have bigger numbers, it's not really reliable. But nonetheless, it's a good drone boat for early starters if you want to aim for frigates and go for the worm, for example, which is a drone boat. Uh, you can uh, you can focus on frigates and uh, basically develop the Tristan. Now we have on tier on the tech three uh, our first destroy. It's the Catalyst. Uh, the Catalyst small railgun optimal range roll bonus 25%. So you get this by default. Uh, small railgun operation bonus per level, 6% small railgun damage, and small railgun accuracy fall off. Now, the destroyer command bonus per level gives you some extra 5% armor. So, this is uh, your first uh, real combat vessel uh, after the frigates. This is uh, one of the things that you'll probably try to get because it's good for PvE, it's good for PvP, uh, you can do a lot of stuff in terms of those uh, thingies. So I'm moving on to the TF4, Tech 4, Tech Level 4. We've got the Atron 2, which is basically an upgrade of the Atron. And as you can see, the Atron is slowly, the upgrades of the Atron are slowly moving towards Interceptor and Tackle roll bonuses. We've seen uh, the basic Atron has had only Stasis Web, uh, web Fire, uh, capacity now we see also the warp disruptor capacity bonus for the roll and after bonus but after burner bonus per level 10 percent velocity bonus when you activate after burners meaning more speed so again tacklers and uh, interceptors and scouts frigate command bonus per level 7.5 percent small railgun accuracy fall off and 12 percent railgun damage so this one is good for tackle and Trying to defeat those drones, remember, a, a tackler's worst enemy is drones. Uh, so yeah, this is what the Atron 2 is good for. Uh, oops, wrong button. Now we get over to the Mollus. The Mollus is your first support frigate that you'll see in the Galenti ship tree. Now, the items for it... <laughs> have not been yet introduced in the game. That's a pity, because the Molus excels at electronic warfare in the sensor damp field. 
what sensor damper means is uh, you basically cut down your uh, your uh, opponent's ship's sensor by uh, a certain amount that he'll no longer be able to maintain ship lock. Uh, it's not jamming, but for example, if uh, um, a, an enemy ship has optimal targeting range of 75 kilometers uh, and you activate sensor dampers or, or on that enemy ship, uh, the targeting will go down considerably, like the 40 kilometers, 30 kilometers. Uh, with multiple sensor dampers, you can actually get him to one kilometer targeting range, meaning anything outside of that one kilometer range, if he has them in target locked in, uh, they'll basically drop, so he'll lose his targets. Um, again, the items are not yet in the game, so the mollus is pretty much useless uh, right now. Moving on to the tier 4 attack for destroyers, we've got the Argus Trainer, which you do receive by completing the advanced tutorial, the um, fourth part, if I'm not mistaken. 12% uh, roll bonus uh, velocity for drones and small drone operation bonus per level 5% and destroyer command bonus per level 5%, warp disruptor and energy neutralizing range and small railgun damage. So the Argus Trainer. Uh, is your uh, first drone destroyer, drone boat destroyer, and uh, it, it, it's you can see it's focused on drones, but it also has some interesting bonuses on um, on e war, which is the warp disruptor optimal range and energy neutralizer. Uh, you'll see soon enough uh, where exactly the Argos is trying to go as we upgrade into uh, higher tier levels. So the Argos trainer is a bit flimsier than the actual Argos because it only has like three drone slots. Um, but it's good nonetheless. Now the optimal, actually the, the drone uh, damage bonus is a lot smaller than the actual Argos. This is one that's just 5% drone DPS. Uh, moving on to the actual Algos, we've got 12.5% drone velocity for all bonus and small drone operation bonus per level, 20% drone DPS. We've got the same uh, same amount of drone hard points, but 20% drone DPS, that is like a big, very big increase and in. you'll see in your DPS. Uh, drone EHP and Warp Disrupt Optimal Range and Energy Neutralizer Optimal Range. As you can see, the um, uh, the turret, the railgun bonus is gone from the actual Argos. Uh, it's a much sturdier ship and uh, it, it's it's actually quite good. Uh, I suggest you aim for it if you want uh, to go for drone boats. Ignore the Tristan, go for the Argos because that's where you'll probably do your thing until you manage to get the cruisers and we'll get to that in a moment. <clears throat> for now, we've got another version of the Catalyst. It's the Catalyst 2. Uh, it has more damage, uh, one extra turret if I'm not mistaken. We've got three, yep, Catalyst only three turrets. Uh, this one has four high slots, meaning you can fit four uh, rail guns. You can either go for close range uh, or long range uh, rail guns. So it's, it's a difference in DPS and in um, optimal range, of course. So small small rail gun operation bonus per level: 2.5 rail gun damage, uh, 7.5 tracking speed, and 7.5 accuracy fall off, and destroyer command bonus per level: 5% armor. So it's an excellent aggressor. It's an excellent PvP ship, early PvP ship. You can see the uh, market estimates this as costing just two around two million. Uh, I hardly doubt that because the market is still in this rate. Moving on to tier 5. Tier 5, you've got the Imicus cover tops. Now, we have the cloaking devices in the game. Uh, we still don't have the scan resolution, uh, the scan strength. We don't have the probes. We don't have the stuff for, for scanning and doing exploration uh, or scanning down people. But it's an upgrade of the Imicus. And if you remember, the Imicus was your basic cargo transporter. As you can see, the cargo hold capacity is now uh, 1500 cubic meters and 8% uh, cargo hold capacity per frigate command bomber bonus level. Now it can fit a covered ops cloaking device, meaning you can warp cloaked. So it's an excellent ship for transporting and hauling stuff to null sec or low sec 
um, dockable station, beware not to get uh, tricked because uh, once players will stop building their outposts in the stations, they'll basically cut off access except to their own corporation and alliance members, meaning you won't be able to dock there. So be careful, always make sure that the station you're delivering to uh, located in Molsec is an NPC station. With Losec you don't have this problem, so excellent cargo, small uh, scale freighter I must say. Uh, with a cloaking device, so it's uh, it's safe to use. The Navitas. This is the second support frigate that you're going to see in the Galantia tree, but uh, this time we are focusing on uh, basically filling up the healer role in in a gang. 80% armor uh, for a roll bonus, 8% remote armor repair, optimal range, 100% armor repair accuracy fall off, meaning more range in repping your friends, remote armor operation bonus per level, 12%, um, remote armor capacitor need, meaning your capacitor will drain a lot slower, and 7.5 remote armor repair efficiency, meaning you will repair much more than what the actual module states on. If you remember, we've talked about this, if you uh, tap and hold on module in your cargo you'll see the basic stats if you fit the module on your ship and you tap and hold again you'll see the module uh, having the stats uh, with your skills taken into consideration or ship bonuses moving on to two more versions of the catalyst on the tier 5 we've got the catalyst guardian so this is your basic tank this is the first tank that you get to see in the Galenti ship tree. It's, it's a destroyer and it can fit armor link modules. Armor link modules, basically you can, uh, when you activate all ships in the, in the nearby vicinity, um, share damage with you, the one who has the item activated, preferably the guardian ship. So this baby has some pretty good stats on the resistances so if you manage to up those more and you will be able to do it with uh, with the uh, armor hardness and with the damage control you get those resistances high enough and you get to cut down a lot of the incoming dps on your friends and you take it instead but because you have so much uh, high resistances it's basically no <laughs> You'll take some damage, but uh, it's, a, it's a good tank. This is the definition of tank. Taking damage from other people uh, onto yourself. The second version of the Catalyst on the Tier 5 is the Catalyst Navy issue. It's an improved, or actually something that works in par, on par with the Catalyst 2. Uh, in, the betas, uh, in the betas, this was uh, much stronger. It had five high slots, um, so you could fit five turrets. This has been nerfed, now we have four turrets just that like the Catalyst 2 and the uh, bonuses are somewhat similar. Small railgun operation bonus per level, uh, you've got 7.5% uh, railgun damage, 7.5% 7, 7 tracking speed and accuracy fall off. Armor and scanner resolution, I don't know what that is there, but if we manage to compare with the Catalyst 2, you'll see that we get the... Uh, no. I was expecting like some advanced skills there. Well, fool me once. Uh, small regular operation, okay, and the destroyer command. No, the, the required skills are basically the same. The uh, the difference is in the actual bonuses. Um, this is a, a good ship, a good sturdy ship. Um, it, it was a lot better before the nerf, but it was actually um, unbalanced compared to the other navy issue destroyers from the other races the other factions it had the catalyst navy issue had one extra gun <laughs> so they they nerfed it they cut it away tier 5 first cruiser but let's go to the trainer version 5% drone DPS, medium drone operation bonus per level and cruiser command bonus level, inertia modifier meaning gives you more agility, 4 drone uh, hard points, you can fly 4 drones at the same time, uh, 2 high slots, I would not recommend using turrets on that because it has no bonuses, use energy neutralizers, use something e war, use something to gain the upper hand, don't use uh, guns, if you don't have bonuses, sure you can steal like 
some more damage, but it's tracking. You mostly have this ship fitted for drone damage, extra drone DPS modules. Why fit the, uh, the rail guns if you're not going to be able to benefit from them 100%? The actual Vexa is actually a, a very, very improved version of the uh, Vexa trainer. Just like in the Algus case, we have 5.5%. 7.5% uh, drone DPS uh, increase per medium drone operation uh, bonus uh, level, 5% drone HP and 2 kilometers drone control range, meaning at level 5 you'll get 10 extra uh, drone control range, 10 extra kilometers, and of course the uh, cruise command bonus per level, 5% uh, inertia modifier. This one has 5 drone hard points, meaning you can fit 5 drones and, uh, and launch 5 drones simultaneously, but you do need to have uh, the drone skill uh, upgraded because that will give you uh, the ability to launch more drones in space. If you only have like the skill in level 1 or 2, you won't be able to launch 5 drones, only 4 or 3. Uh, you need to read the skill to, to understand exactly how many drones you get to fly per each level. The last cruiser on the tier 5 is the Thorax Prototype. Uh, it's sort of like the trainer version of the Thorax, has uh, one drone and four uh, high slots which you can fill turrets with. Medium railgun operation bonus per level 4%, railgun damage and 5% railgun tracking speed and inertia modifier uh, just like in the case of the Vexa. This is a good ship focused on turrets, it's the first turret cruiser that you'll get if you want to go with turrets of course um, so that's pretty much it we're going on to tier 6 tier 6 and we've got the Navitas 2 which is basically an upgrade of the Navitas the simple Navitas your support repair fleet forget um, the efficiency at repairing is now 7 point actually it was like that before uh, I don't think anything has changed except the remote armor repair accuracy fall off. Uh, and you've got three high slots now uh, compared to the two high slots that the original Navitas had, the vanilla one. Uh, moving on, we've got the Nemesis, and this is your first stealth bomber. Medium to torpedo power grid need and cloaking device reactivation delay roll bonuses and max covered ops cloaking device, meaning you can fit a cloaking device on this baby you can warp cloaked you can get near the victim uh, be like a bunch of you uh, you and your friends with uh, stealth bombers decloak target drop some <laughs> nasty little torpedoes and uh, that's pretty much it he's history uh, we've got cloaking device lock delay minus 100% uh, when you decloak you can't target stuff immediately this is a roll bonus uh, and helps you target stuff immediately after you decloak uh, so you can start applying that juicy damage and medium missile torpedo upgrade bonus per level we've got the 10% uh, torpedo kinetic damage and 5% explosive damage and flight velocity meaning uh, your torpedoes will go uh, a lot further away Argos Sniper. If you remember, we've talked about the Argos having some interesting bonuses, uh, and this is where the Argos is uh, basically targeted as in specialized ship. We've got 12.5% uh, drone velocity as a roll bonus, meaning, meaning the drones travel a lot faster and uh, reach your opponent, and the advanced small drone up upgrade bonus per level gives you 30% drone DPS. Per skill level, this is insane. And 5% drone HP and advanced destroyer command bonus. We've got the warp disruptor, optimal range, e war, uh, and energy neutralizer, optimal range, meaning you can drain, uh, basically shut down the light from your uh, opponent's um, capacitor. Uh, his modules will start deactivating using uh, energy neutralizers. Uh, and that's why it's a sniper. You get to uh, cut off modules from your opponent. Some may, uh, some of them may be like tank modules, uh, and you've got drone velocity and a huge amount of DPS on drones. Uh, tier six is also 
the Vex home for the Vex Navy issue. 12% uh, drone DPS uh, per advanced medium drone operation bonus, 5% EHP and drone control range. Uh, again, with the scan sensors and stuff, these are not in the game yet. They don't help. Actually, I think the sense, uh, the scan resolution and sensor sensor strength help you in targeting ships a lot faster if i remember correctly uh, from eve online but i don't know if the stats are exactly the same and they do an exact the exact same thing um, so please leave your comments below if you know what scan resolution and scan strength does i definitely don't think it's uh, for the probes uh, so it could be actual uh, help for targeting smaller stuff We've got the thorax, the base thorax, uh, which is 5% armor for armor operation bonus. Uh, that's yeah, that's tank. Cruiser command bonus per level, 5% railgun damage and 7.5% 7, railgun tracking speed. And that's that. Uh, four turret hard points, which is pretty nice. Uh, and we've got the first support cruiser. Uh, this is a, an E-War cruiser, it's uh, the base model, the Celestis, uh, advanced electronic warfare bonus per level, 5% sensor dampener strength and 5% sensor, sensor damper optimal range. It's the cruiser version of the Molus. Um, and advanced cruiser command bonus per level, scan resolution and turret damage. Mm, ah, turret damage, meaning you can fit any kind of turret, I guess so. Scan resolution probably to target stuff faster and to be able to put sensor dampers on it. And we have the Thorax Trainer. I don't know why is the Thorax Trainer and Thorax Prototype. Is there any difference? Four hard slots, okay, 5% armor, 2% railgun damage. I think this one is, oh, 4% railgun damage. Okay, I get it. So the Thorax prototype is actually an improved version of the standard Thorax and the, uh, the Thorax trainer. I don't know how you get in touch with this ship. Maybe you get it as a reward from something. Heck, should I know. Moving over to Tier 7. Tier 7 has Incursors, the Incursors Assault. The Incursors being transformed into a, an Assault Frigate. 5 second damage control activation time, so it lasts longer. Warp Drive Signature penalty uh, radius penalty minus 10%, meaning when you fit a Micro Warp Drive to travel distances faster, uh, like in, in the, the Micro Warp Drive is a better version of the Afterburner. It, it's an entirely different item because it increases your uh, signature radius, meaning you can get uh, you can get hit pretty badly by missiles because missiles actually seek and uh, exploit the signature radius. What drive capacitor need? So um, advanced micro orb drive operation bonus per level gives you exactly that. Advanced frigate command bonus per level, railgun damage, uh, optimal range, and armor repair efficiency. An assault frigate, definitely. Um, moving on to the destroyer from the tier 7 and we've got the Argus Assault drone velocity 12.5% roll bonus and damage control activation time 30% drone DPS same as before and the same bonuses for warp disruptor and energy neutralizer uh, but we don't have actually we do drone velocity oh, I don't get this one maybe the the, the slot configuration the fair the only bonus visible is damage control activation time. So I'm guessing it's an improved version of the sniper, but with more um, survivability. Cruisers, Thorax Guardian is the uh, same thing as the uh, Catalyst Guardian. It's your tank, your fleet tank, your gang tank, takes damage from your friends uh, just to, to tank it himself. <coughs> and we've got the Execura. Uh, this is the upgrade, the cruiser version of the Navitas. Um, it's your healer, your basic standard cruiser healer. Uh, for 400% remote armor repair, optimal range. You can sit, sit pretty far away and rep your friends, your fleet gang, uh, your fleet members. Effectiveness range, uh, 50%. Uh, group capacitor transmitter. This is something that. Uh, that logistic pilots usually use between themselves to share capacitor 
uh, so they don't run out of cap fast, they give capacity, they generate extra uh, battery, extra capacitor that which they share between themselves so they can uh, heal for much longer periods of time. Um, moving on to the Celestis Covert Ops. This is the Covert Ops cloaking device version of the Celestis. Damper strength. I was expecting to see different EWO capabilities, sort of like the Arazu and the Lachesis from EVO Line. Um, like the Force Recon or, or the Combat Recon. I was expecting... I was expecting... Warp Scrambler and Warp Disruptor range. Okay, maybe this will be revised soon. I don't know. Maybe there's another Celestis uh, somewhere around here. We've got the Myrmidon on the tech level for this is your first battle cruiser. 15, uh, 15 kilometer range uh, for drone control and uh, command burst bonus <coughs> module slot. Uh, the command burst modules are basically some modules that you can activate uh, they can some they consume some fuel and uh, you, the, the nearby uh, fleet members receive or actually the entire fleet receives uh, some nice boost depending on what modules you have fitted drone DPS 30% medium drone upgrade uh, armor repair efficiency it's also tanky <laughs> Uh, moving on to tier 8, we've got the uh, Atron Interceptor, which is basically what the Atron was aiming for in the first place. Uh, intercepting and catching stuff, tackling Thorax 2 Guardian, an upgrade of the Thorax Guardian with better stats and with similar bonuses, I must say. And we've got the Vexa Sniper, which is just like the Argo Sniper. We've got drone velocity bonuses. Uh, some more drone DPS bonuses and drone control range bonuses. Moving over to the um, Tech 8 battle cruiser, we have, we have the Brutix. The Brutix is an excellent combat battle cruiser, medium long and optimal range, but it's no longer, it's not a drone boat uh, like the Myrmidon is, but it's a railgun boat. You've got seven. Uh, hard points. Actually, I didn't mention like, five hard points for drones. Seems legit, but damn, seven hard points for uh, turrets. This is this is some serious damage here. 20, 25% uh, optimal range per roll bonus and uh, railgun accuracy fall off. Uh, the damage is not that great and bonuses but I'm guessing it complements with the fact that it has seven <laughs> fittable slots. Uh, medium railgun damage 5% per advanced medium railgun uh, upgrade bonus and repair efficiency of course battle cruiser being bulky and strong like always. <coughs> the Talos this is the attack or the assault battle cruiser it can fit large weapons, large railguns, like battleship sized weapons. It's an excellent uh, platform for uh, sniper fleets, uh, for uh, brawling fleets like Instapop, uh, just from the alpha or just from the sheer damage that uh, uh, large guns can do, but fitted on a fast battle cruiser. You can think of this if you've heard uh, and if you've read about history uh, in class or at school or at home or whatever, you know that the uh, German Navy had those pocket battleships, uh, those fast battleships. One of them, I think, was the Graf Spee. Um, it, it was not actually a battleship. It was actually a uh, an exactly like the Talos, an, an, an assault and attack battle cruiser. It had battleship sized guns but the whole of a battle cruiser meaning uh, much much more agile speed was faster it had no uh, no tank like no uh, the armor was was pretty bad not like a, a real battleship but that was uh, that was a key element that uh, allowed it to be uh, a lot more faster than than uh, bigger bulkier battleships so this is the Talos, the attack battle cruiser of the Galente. Moving over to tier uh, to tier nine, we're close to finishing now. Tier nine, we're seeing the Nemesis two, which is an upgrade of the stealth 
uh, Bomber. Um, and we've got the Celestis 2 Covert Ops and still no bonuses for warp uh, jamming. Why? I don't understand why. The Celestis, actually, the Lachesis and the Arazu were excellent at tackling from long range, like from 40 kilometers. Warp Disruptor. There you have it. <laughs> Apparently, um, the Celestis did not go into the expected um, role, I must say. So, it focuses on damper, and that's pretty much it. And you can go cloaky. I don't know. This does not feel like a good combat recon ship to me. The bonuses, except for the sensors dampers. <coughs> Curious to see what kind of ships do have the warp disrupt bonuses, as in combat enforced recon ships. Uh, on the tier, uh, we're up to tier nine. Yep, tier nine. We've got the Mimidon Guardian, which is the tanky version of the Mimidon. Wants to take over the damage that you'll receive as a fleet, um, and we've got the Talos 2. Talos 2 never existed in the uh, Eve Online game, so this is something new. 95% larger uh, railgun power grid need was the roll bonus. We've got it, it's it's an improvement. It's an improvement of the Talos. Um, resistance is a bit higher, and uh, the uh, bonuses are kind of like the same. Also, seven slots. Talos, six slots, okay, <coughs> one extra gun can make this count. Brutix Logistics, okay, <coughs> this is the first time that I'm seeing a Brutix uh, in the logistics form. So this is the Logistics Battle Cruiser, um, probably because logistics crews are not that good in EVE Online, and just as a small comparison, in EVE Online, the, the, uh, the logistics Tech 2 ships, Tech 2 or those advanced that you require shitload of skills, um, were very hard to take down, especially if you had more of them in the fleet. Uh, they were real tanky, the resistances were, were pretty much high. Uh, Sovereign mentioned that uh, during the pre release beta events he used logistics and he, goes, he just got one shot it out of the sky. And yeah, that pretty much says everything about logistics. They're going to be flimsy, they're going to be pretty bad. So I think if they're not going to introduce the Tech 2 versions, um, might as well just have the Brutix Logistics, which is the battle cruiser size logistics ship. Um, yeah, armor repair, optimal range 600%. Wow, you can, you can repair your fleet from like... <laughs> hundreds of kilometers away. No, I actually don't know. I don't know, uh, I haven't focused much on logistics, so I don't know the upper ranges for uh, remote repair modules. And here on Tech, uh, Tech 9 and Tier 9, we actually get to see the first battleship, which is the Dominix. The Dominix, 40% drone DPS, large drone operation bonus per level. Extreme DPS, but that's actually okay because it is a battleship after all. Drone optimal range and drone tracking speed, and uh, drone control range, so you can get to to launch your drones and control them from a bigger distance. Uh, only five uh, drone hit points, uh, just like the Mimidon, but but the bonuses are for the large drone operation bonus, meaning Dominix favors large drones. Because the bonuses have been done in such a way, I don't think this is actually good and healthy for for this kind of battleship. <clears throat> Why? Because this battleship, uh, let's say in 1v1, if it gets tackled by a frigate, its only defense is to uh, launch, um, launch light drones, small drones, but they won't benefit from the bonuses. That's bad. <laughs> Oh, I think. I mean, uh, in EVE Online, the bonuses were uh, not per large drone operation. Uh, it was basically just per ship, um, and you had the the, the bonus. Uh, the bonuses for drones were actually from having the the drone skills um, 
trained at higher levels. So you had the, uh, the large drones with their own bonus, you had the small drones with their own bonus, and now it's you're basically forced to, to fly only um, large drones, which are kind of ineffective against, uh, against uh, fast moving targets. And we've got the Megathron, uh, uh, which is the powerhouse, uh, not a drone boat, uh, it's a turret boat. We've got uh, a railgun activation time uh, reduced, 5% hand tracking speed, 5% for a large railgun operation bonus, and inertia modifier, that's pretty much it. Oh, I expected some damage. Why is there no damage bonus? We've got railgun operation bonus per level, but there's no damage. And seven slots. It might compensate. I don't know. But the Talos also had seven slots with large guns. Of course, not the same tank. But this is actually the battleship. The battleship, and it has no bonuses for rail guns. I'm a bit disappointed about this variant. So let's get over to the tier 10. We've got the Adrian 2 Interceptor, which is basically. Uh, another version, another more upgraded version of the Atron Interceptor. Um, we have the Catalyst Covert Ops, uh, Fitz Covert Ops uh, modules, and it's basically the same stats as your uh, your Catalyst 2 or Catalyst Navy issue. Uh, maybe good. <coughs> in small gang, you can just walk cloaked and then decloak your opponent. But why is it at tier 10? I mean. We've got stealth bombers for that. I don't know, maybe they'll add some more stuff when they uh, introduce capital ships and they add like sinusural uh, field generators so you can jump with capitals. Maybe this ship will make sense in the future. Uh, Mimidon 2 Guardian, so it's a tech 2 version of the Mimidon Guardian. Better stats, uh, better, uh, better bonuses. Um, also, it has a max armor link modules plus one. It can fit two, if I'm not mistaken, or just one. I think no, I think just one. Twenty percent drone DPS um, and armor repair efficiency. So it, it, it takes damage and tanks it itself. And Megathron Strike. Okay, this is the version that I've been waiting for. Where have you been? Seven turret hardpoints, large railgun damage, 5% per advanced railgun upgrade bonus, and large railgun activation time uh, and tracking speed. Okay, this is nice. Inertia modifier. So the only bonus is for the, uh, the railgun damage, which is actually good. We've got six low slots. We can fit tank and damage mods. Uh, seven slots for, tur for, for turrets and four, um, four slots for uh, E-War or for, I don't know, unfortunately, uh, battleships kind of need from time to time to use the energy neutralizers, but I think that will be the role of the Dominix, even though it has no bonus for that, like the, uh, like the Argos uh, and the Tristran. I think it would have been good for the uh, Dominics to have. Unfortunately, it does not have any bonuses for energy neutralizer. It would have been great. And the Hyperion. Hyperion is the last battleship, the last ship in the Galante ship tree. We've got 10% large railgun damage, so this is an improved yet better version of, uh, of the Megathron. And we've got uh, accuracy fall off all large uh, all applied from the large railgun operation bonus per level. So we've got battleship command bonus per level, 7.5% armor repair efficiency, meaning it's a tanky and damage dealing menace. It's the last ship from the tree. Oh my god, we've talked so much. <laughs> Time to breathe. So what do I think about the ship tree? Uh, some of the ships are really powerful, and I really feel they'll, they'll, they'll be quite useful. Some of the ships are not going to be played at all until the items and modules uh, that can be used for them, and that on which the ships have bonuses for, uh, will be introduced. Uh, and, well, I don't know. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed about some of the, uh, some of the ships on the higher tech levels. 
me myself am gonna go, go for drone so my aim is now going to be to get a vexer and the second part uh, I mean to go for uh, the Myrmidon in the battle cruise and the battleship to go for the Dominics so that's my path this is something that I chose and I'm going to focus on that uh, given the fact that you've seen a lot a lot of ships uh, what do you think would be your preferred uh, play style Interceptor, we've seen uh, Galante Ship Tree has Interceptor, Tackler, uh, or uh, Tank, or Healer, or just benefit from those transport frigates to get your uh, cash inflow running. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> So this was the Galante Ship Tree. Uh, thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters. And I'll see you guys next time. Uh, something else. Cheers.